subscription service that offers monthly science boxes that combine hands-on experiences with VR, virtual reality, and of course, AR, augmented reality technology to engage kids in study in science. Yeah, man. They send you monthly science boxes that are STEM related. What does STEM mean, sir? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. These projects that they send you are not only super fun, but they're also educational. They come with very clear instructions that your kids can easily follow them along because there's pictures and everything. Each set has a different theme and are catered to different age groups. So one is for five plus, but there's also others like male physics for eight plus or male chemistry for 10 plus. Wow. They strive to make serious science accessible, interesting, and cool. It's also cool for adults. What I love about them is that each box comes with everything you need for the project. So every time you do one of these sets, you learn so much from the problem solving skills to science discovery. Guess what? We have a promo code. You can use tech and it'll give you a 60% discount for the first month for any of their subscriptions. Also, the offer is limited for this month. So make sure before the end of January, going and visiting melscience.com. Use your promo code tech to receive 60% discount for the first month on any of these great STEM related science projects. That's melscience.com. Use your promo code tech to receive 60% discount for the first month. Yeah, man, it's really cool. This is Nathan Mum and Micro Day from Tech Time with Nathan Mum on Kixie AM 880. Hey, Nathan, are you enjoying broadcasting on Kixie 880 AM? I sure am, Mike. I love being a part of the new Kixie 880 AM local channels from 3 to 4 p.m. on Tuesdays where you get the best technology news without having to geek out. Don't miss the show because you're always going to get the most up-to-date technology information. Listen to us live Tuesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. on Kixie 880 AM. I'll be there with bells on. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever wanted to give the gift to history? I always want to give the gift of history. All right. Well, guess what? You can journey through the annuals of time with curated letters from George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison, and more delivered by mail to your mailbox each and every week. That sounds awesome. Yes. Guess what? Give the gift of historical letters to loved ones. Historical gift packs are a journey through history's most significant moments from the formation letters of the founding fathers at the birth of the United States to letters that changed the course of World War II. At historicmail.com, you can visit historicmail, M A I L.com. This is the perfect gift for a history buff delivered right to their doorstep. Who can I get a letter from? You can get a letter from many different historical individuals, including Henry Ford, George Washington, and journeys throughout all of our great American history. You can get yourself a regular priced subscription for 10 weeks, or 10 letters being sent out to you for the regular price of $59.99. What kind of letters are they? Ah, these letters are actual reproductions of the real letters or messages are written by historical figures. They always include a few paragraphs of contact information to shed some light on the fascinating historical context behind the correspondence as well. Make sure to visit historicmail.com to learn more information. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. What's up, what's up? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the common everyday person across the nation from Boston on the East Coast all the way to L.A. and the Seattle and the West Coast area up here with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our 25 million radio listeners to our hour of insightful technology information with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum. And welcome to our show. We live stream during our show on the four most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, and Facebook. We encourage you to to look us up online and visit us at techtimeradio.com to keep up with all your technology information. Plus, see how we rate our whiskey pick of the day. If you're a Twitter fan, you can go online right now and hashtag us at hashtag techtimeradio. Again, that's the pound sign, right? The traditional pound sign. Is that what you called it? Or the tic-tac-toe sign? 
Well, when I was a kid, it was a tic tac toe. It was a tic tac toe sign. That's then it right. Was the pound sign. And and now it's like a hashtag. Yeah, so it's it hashtag. That's keeps right. getting bigger. <laughs> and we'll do our best to answer your tweets on the air, and of course after the show. Mike and I have been providing a segmented technology radio show for over two na- years now with a funny spin. So visit TechTimeRadio.com and make sure to say hi, sign up for our newsletter, and subscribe to our best technical information to be part of the Tech Timers face group and talk with us. Tech Time is a weekly hour technology show about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by Nathan Mum, myself, a multi-business executive who's worked 10 years at Microsoft, five years at Vulcan Inc. We're going to be talking about some items that I did at Vulcan Inc. today. Uh, I live in the Seattle area. I'm a technologist with over 30 years of expertise and a keynote speaker on technology subjects from security to blockchain and everything in between. My co-host, Mike Gorday, is an award-winning author originally from Arizona. He is a human solution consultant living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. He combines his continuing education and human behavior with over a 20 plus year career, building clients and helping them understand human behavior so they can make better choices in their lives. Mike keeps me from geeking out while providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We are two friends that have come from two different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible each and every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. We welcome you to join one of the groups of that each week so either a fan family or family or friend you got hopefully that? fans you, you got that yeah well you know i have two single kids so if you yeah. want to if you well, wa- fan, fans are better <laughs> fans are good fans are good yeah. are they, or friends yeah. family doesn't always work out uh, you know <laughs> I, let me tell you about family this weekend oh my word all right well welcome <laughs> to join us uh we're now going to get ready to start our show so odie let's start it out now on today's show i feel like we should be eating a turkey leg i you you, i said i know today on the show google is being sued in the u.s over accusations that it deceives people and how it controls location tracking oh that surprises me so between google and facebook really no between those two i mean i'll just tell you it's just so simple to to make fun of them and, and talk about all the stuff but we're gonna be talking about that we also have twitter what is about the nft you now can use an nft as debuting a hexagon shaped nft profile picture you have one of your friends has this too right yeah it's it's really underwhelming is it underwhelming yeah (laughs) all right well we're gonna be talking about that uh then in our segment technology insider we're investigating the technology problems that face the winter olympic games in beijing china we also have our favorite features including this week in technology of course mike's mesmerizing moment moment along with Ask the Expert, as our guest Phil Hennessy joins the show talking about online car purchasing. We have a few Nathan Nuggets and, of course, our pick of the day. Nathan Nuggets. Yep, see, that's right. <laughs> Sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time to start our show with our loaded question of the week, brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. Mike and Odie, here is your loaded question. Do, 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 do. It is what helps you feel better when you're upset or stressed. <laughs> I could say whiskey. Well, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Are you going to say whiskey? <laughs> well, uh, that's uh, how it's good. No, we don't want to be drinking. You, you know that, what that, helps that. helps me is what's that? Being quiet by myself because I'm introverted and most of the stress in my life is caused by other people. So you can just kind of sit back and relax? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Odie, you're up. I'm the complete opposite. I love to blast music on my Echo Dot or just have something in the background and just let go for a little bit. Just let go. Yeah, let go, scream, shout the lyrics at the top of my lungs. Wow. So I would say play play video games. (laughs) Well, yeah, I do. So I I like to play video games. But let me just tell you, last night I was trying to play a video game. but It It didn't work out. It was downloading forever and ever. Yeah, you got called out too. You don't even know. Was that? my, My wife was like, well, didn't you get to play no he had to do an update well he's the tech guy <laughs> why right. is he updating yes yeah, so i was yeah. updating and so then i got out of the couch because i'm getting older and i literally like pinched a nerve so here i am walking like an old guy oh, in, you... into the bedroom That's after awesome. i didn't get to play video games what a letdown i was like i know you know what i should have had and some whiskey on the yeah, side yeah you should have and, you I, and now you're gonna go and take that little pinched nerve and run up and down a court that's right that's right i will be doing that a little bit later tonight all right well that was our loaded question of the week mike as always we have our whiskey tasting during the commercials we're going to select a whiskey today we'll see if it gets zero one or two thumbs up as our pick of the day make sure you listen all the way through the show for some interesting facts that will make you go "Mm." 
Now let's get our episode started with our first segment. This is our top stories in the first five minutes that brings you the top technology stories everyone will be talking about for weeks to come within the first five minutes of the show. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right, here we go. Story number one, Google sued over deception location tracking. Google is being sued in the U.S. over accusations that it deceived people about how it controls location tracking. All right, let's listen now to News Nation with the breaking story. Well, Google is facing new legal battles concerning your privacy. Four attorneys general are suing the company, alleging in separate lawsuits that the company deceived users in order to gain access to location data, claiming users could still be tracked even if they had turned off their location history. Monica Madden from our Austin station is live for us. Now, this lawsuit is about Android users specifically, and a lot of us have some type of smartphone and use location services every day. So really at the heart of this lawsuit, though, is whether or not Google lied about users' ability to turn their location services off. The lawsuit alleges Google misled users by saying they could stop being tracked simply by turning off the location history in their settings. Tech experts I spoke to say this really raises larger questions about why is Google collecting the data, who are they selling it to, and whether or not users are identified in the data that Google is giving to its advertisers. We're always being tracked. All right, Monica, thank you for that. That's right. That We're is always right. Being tracked. We're always being tracked. If you think that anything you get today is for free and that people are not tracking you or, or knowing what's they're, going on. They're as bad as Facebook. That's right. Well, I, I don't know if they're as bad as Facebook. At least Google isn't trying to say that they're going to take over the whole world with some metaverse well, and, and I, other Yeah, aspects. but I don't I mean, all I have to do is think of a product that I want to look at and suddenly ads came up. It's it's that it's almost that bad. It is it is so bad. Literally sometimes I'm talking about something with my wife, you know, it'd be really nice. We should go to Vegas one of these times. Boom, all of a sudden I got Vegas ads coming out. I'm like, "What the heck yeah. is going on?" It's, it's a little it's a little odd because, you know, if I want a screwdriver from Amazon, suddenly Amazon thinks I'm a construction worker. <laughs> so you get a whole bunch of so stuff. I get in. a whole bunch of you got leveling here. Here, buy this, buy that. But, I don't want I just wanted a screwdriver. <laughs> just wanted a screw- well, Google says that these claims are inaccurate and outdated. Of course they do. But we will see what happens as things continue to work its way out. I can tell you for a fact Google is absolutely tracking you and they will continue to track you as long as you have Google device items on your on your systems, they're they're gonna do that. I mean, that's what they do. That's what they get their information. That's where the, yeah, that's where they that's where the money, money is. That's why if you give it away for free, you got to make it somewhere in the back end, and it's by those targeted ads. All right, <laughs> Mike, I think you got story number two. Yeah, right? yeah, we're gonna talk about how Twitter is debuting a hexagon shaped NFT profile picture. So if uh, <laughs> this was announced on Thursday, yep, and the launch of a tool through which users can now showcase their non fungible tokens as their profile pictures. Tapping into a digital collectibles craze that has exploded all over the place this past we year. Ta- we, know, we talked about it when it was first breaking. We literally talked for I yeah, was looking we, at it. We did in have our February, own. February in February of last year is when we talked about NFTs. That's right. We have our own NFTs we do. on you our can, website. You can go to techtimeradio.com and click on our merchandise. Just me doodling and, stuff. And it's Mike Corday <laughs> just doodling, converted into a JPEG. That's but right. But if you want to pay us a couple hundred dollars, you can buy it and have it officially licensed a- NFT. Yeah, and I, you could use it I don't as know your, if you can get a yes, hexagon-shaped thing. You would. You oh, get yeah. a hexagon-shaped thing. All right, so this feature that is available on iOS to users of the company's Twitter Blue subscription service connects their Twitter accounts to crypto wallets where the users store their NFT holdings. Yep. Twitter displays the NFT profile picture as hexagons, differentiating them from the standard circles available to other users. So it's a... It's just a little exclusivity there. Oh, so you got to have Twitter blue here. So if you yes, realize you that, you have yes, to have Twitter blue. And that we talked about this. So that's an additional service to, than the free service. That's right. You got to pay to have you Twitter. You pay bait. Twitter, and Twitter's going to change your picture it, from that. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to it's give you a perk of having a hexagon shape. I mean, if you're spending money on NFTs, I guess you don't mind spending money on Twitter. <laughs> that's right. I guess that's, <laughs> I guess that's the, the moral of the story, huh? Yeah. So, well, you know, like everybody else, Twitter is rushing to cash in on the crypto trend like NFTs, uh, which is a speculative asset authenticating digital items such as images, videos, and land and virtual worlds. Yeah. The social media platform last year added functionality for users to send and receive Bitcoin. And then, uh, you know, sales of NFTs have reached some $25 billion in 2021. Well, who has $25 to, billion dollars to spend on JPEG creations on the Internet? Uh, 
clearly a lot of people do. I just, I, I just I don't, don't think get it's that. just one person. No, it's not just one you know, person. It might be Jeff out there. He might be just <laughs> buying up all the NFTs. Be- Bezos is doing That's all that. That's right. <laughs> okay. He's got the money. Okay. So according to data from market tracker DAP radar, although there were signs of growth slowing towards the end of this year, so we might be seeing this as a little bit of a fad coming to a close. So this know. reminds me of a, kind of the millennial generation and Gen Z. So they, they kind of buy and trade cryptocurrency really aggressively until about November. December, January, and February, it's always at its all-time lows. That's mm-hmm. a great time to buy. And then when it gets in March, April, May, the same with NFTs, and all of a sudden people are getting bored. It's starting to get summertime. So you think we're going to see a, just a dip? And I think we are. Up. You think this is going to hang out for a while? Absolutely. I think this will take a big surge back in well, the summer I months. I suppose once it gets through everything like, uh, you know, all industries where I'm going to go to work and there's going to be a non-fungible token in my coffee cup or some, <laughs> something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody pulls up to you. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I got my new non-fungible. I got my NFT. Token. Check you out my Twitter. That? Oh, I just wish I had that coffee one. My coffee NFT is only halfway full, not three quarters full. Yeah. Check All out, right. Check out my doodle. <laughs> Here we go. Story number three, Elon Musk, Neuralink plans to implant chips in human brains oh, to boy. treat neural disorders. Yeah. That, <laughs> uh, that's going to be creating. Elon her. Musk's Neuralink has begun recruiting for a clinical trial director, bringing it one step closer to developing technology that could connect the human mind directly to devices. Neuralink's goal is to build something called a brain computer interface. Remember the old original like floppy drive cables, these big gray cables you yeah. get? Well, now we're going to get this brain computer are interface. Gonna, are we going to ha- are we going to have big gray cables? <laughs> Well, I, nine pin no, we're gonna have adapter. those big black ones that you put right in the back of your head. Six, you ever seen any of those six, Matrix movies? Oh yeah, it's gonna be big. that. You're gonna put it right in the back. Okay, you're gonna be in some shell shocked area that has a bunch of fluid flying around you. I, I think we should have a sixteen pin adapter back there. <laughs> oh, sixteen the, pin remember with the double screws. I, I do, remember that? I do that old VGA yeah, or VGA. Monocron that you right. put in there. All right. Well, Neuralink's goal is to build the computer interface that allows people to transmit, receive information between their brain and a computer wirelessly according to the Neuralink's website. Yeah, if, you, if you're worried about being tracked on your phone. <laughs> for instance, a paralyzed person. Now, th- let me tell you, it's always interesting for this technology because they always kind of put the spin towards uh, solving a problem first. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's that's normally what they try to do. But then there's always these other ancillary things that well, come we're gonna up talk, as we We're going to be talking about that throughout today's show. We are. That's you know? kind of our theme. For instance, a paralyzed person with a Neuralink chip implanted in their brain could control a mouse and keyboard without moving their limbs. Information could also be transmitted the other ways that allows a person's brain to stimulate the sense of touch. Yeah. How is this accomplished? Neural brains is a brain-generated electric signal with electrodes placed nearby the neurons that can capture and record these signals. Electrodes? Yeah. Well, the technology <laughs> is much more complex in simple sense. Replaying these signals can stimulate and actually sensation of different experiences such as holding an apple or kissing another person yeah well there we go this sounds like an incredible way to leverage technology but again let's take a look at the weird and darker end of all of this i feel like i'm back for Neuralink with the matrix movie and this happens well all the time do you want the red pill or the blue pill mike uh, I don't. I don't do pills. So. You don't do pills. <laughs> Have you seen the Matrix? Right. Absolutely. So the red pill is. Yeah, I would. I would just take the red pill and go back to sleep. You go back to sleep. Yeah, that's that, right. And that I don't, don't want to eat mush and fly around <laughs> in a spaceship and get. All right. Killed <laughs> by a little. So, so, okay. Octopus. So the newest Matrix movie. Have you seen the new Matrix? Movie? I have not seen that. Well, you need to see it because it has all about it. Where the whole world, some people just would rather not realize what it's like in the real world type of deal. It's kind of have the same. Yeah. Same play. Well, on I, that. I mean. We can we can argue that what we think is real is really not anyway. So and Morpheus is a new character, so they didn't get the same Morpheus, and it wasn't quite as good. But all right, Mike, our time is up. As we got through our top stories, if you want to learn more, please visit us online at techtimeradio.com or click on our episode section or a blog to get even more details on these stories and features. Now it's time to get ready for our whiskey tasting at the break. But up next, we have our Ask the Expert segment with our guest Phil Hennessy with the research segment on online car purchasing how to go about making the best of your online shopping for a vehicle you're not going to want to miss this segment it's going to be right after we come back from this break this is nathan mum and mike Roday from tech time with nathan mum hey mike yeah what i got a secret to tell you tech time radio is moving to kixie am 880 on tuesday january 11th from 3 to 4 p.m no way yes 
We are moving the Tech Time radio show that has blown up on KKNW 1150, and we're now moving it over to Kixie. Do I have to keep the secret? Uh, no. We, we're, we need to tell everybody about it so they can see the explosion January 11th of Tech Time Radio from 3 to 4 p.m. Hey, Mike. What's up? Hey, with 2022 coming along, guess what? We got some news to announce. What are we going to announce? Well, we are announcing that we are going to be continuing to broaden our show, and we're moving to Kixie 880. 880 AM KIXI? Starting January 11th. We are going to be on Tuesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. But don't you fear... Because everybody at KKNW will still continue to have our show broadcasting on Saturdays for the two hours. And, of course, our replay options on Thursday morning. Awesome. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that 8-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry, that's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. All right. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nate the Mum. We just had our first whiskey tasting mic during the break. We got to sample our whiskey and our pick of the day during the show. We have chosen the South Shot Bourbon, 80 proof, $9.19 for this bottle. Yeah. Now, now, let me tell you a little bit about it. It is crafted to honor the brave men and women who built this country. South Shot is for those that are loyal to friends and family and that are not fearful of challenges. South Shot Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey, produced by South Shot. Uh, again, it's uh, 80 proof, $9.19. It's a Total Wine House brand. So Total Wines and More mm-hmm. have a house brand. This is it. Actually, it's made in South Carolina company using Turpin technology. Turpin? Yep. This is designed to use ultrasonic energy driven oxidation to try to create and mimic what happens when you actually barrel it in the aging process. So this is not actually barreled and it is and not aged. No, so it, it is is a technique that is used to make it taste like it's uh which is probably why it's so inexpensive. Uh it, it is. It's a big box company specializing in over 100 of the bottom shelf whiskeys trying to cheat the distilling process. That's what well, Mike, that's what Mr. Gorday uh, or Mr. Uh, Gregoire sends us all this I, I, information. Well, yeah, that's cheating. Well, it's, it but, is cheating. Uh, you know, it it's pretty tasty. It though. is really it's decent, not though. Bad. It's bad. It's not a bitter bite. I actually kind of like a, it. It's got it's got a little bit of a long burn, and of course, we're not we're not total aficionados. Here. No, we're not. That's why we only do thumbs up, thumbs down. Correct. We tried to do all the other stuff, and people were like, what are the heck what are you, are you doing? Yeah, you yeah, guys so, don't know. The, I just like does it. Does it taste good? Yes. yes. That's right. Okay. okay. All right. So <laughs> we'll see how this does. We have uh, two more tastings. Hopefully it doesn't uh, go bad during the uh, other hours. Well, I'm worried about that because it's not actually barrel aged. So. <laughs> so maybe it stays out here a while. And it I don't know. Maybe maybe all those cosmic rays, they just mess it all up. All right. Well, the next thing we're going to be <laughs> doing is we're going to move ourselves on to a special segment. We are are excited to have Phil Hennessy back on the show. He'll, Phil is a expert technologist. He kind of does all of our little gadgets. He, he's a big drone guy. He's a big kind of AI guy. So we're going to start this next segment we call Ask the Expert. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. <laughs> okay, you know, we're still new. So, yeah. I, I, so, so you know what? Let me just tell you, Odie is almost on this where I don't have to say these things now. She's going to know exactly what's going on. So we're right. excited about that. All right. We're going to welcome back Phil. Phil's going to join us right now on the screen. 
Bill, hopefully you are uh, sampling some whiskey also. Uh, tell us where you're coming to us from today. Oh, look at oh, you. He's got it. Oh, what, and what do you have there, Phil? Uh, Hibiki Satori Whiskey, Japanese Harmony. From Japan. I got it in Tokyo. Hold on, Phil. We can't uh, hear hold you. On, hold on, <laughs> Phil. Give us two seconds here. Here we go. Hang on. Let's try that again. Are, are you there, Phil? Can you guys hear me? There we go. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. All right. So what did you have there? I got Japanese I got whiskey from whiskey Tokyo. Tokyo. Oh, you know, I had some of that. My uncle actually brought some of that over because he's kind of my... He's my whiskey guy. Yeah, uh, it How had a little. It? it had a little bit of a bitter taste, though, when I tasted I, it. I I, I, this it one's really smooth. This is really, is, really good. Okay. Really. And, and where are you calling? Where are you calling in from? You want to tell I'm us calling where in from uh, south of Tampa, in Florida. In Florida, that's you know what that is one of our next areas that we're looking to expand to. So you're going to be able to hear us down in the Florida area come up in the next couple months or so, Phil. So there you go, you'll be able to hear us. Yeah, it'll be on Tech Time Plus. That's right, it'll be Tech Time Plus. We're going to start <laughs> charging. Tech Time Plus, everything. That's right. Plus. All right. Well, tell us first thing that you noticed. You did some research for us, right? So now you also went to CES. Uh, just a real quick brief uh, deal because we're doing the best of the best of CES. I've already kind of dogged on CES. How many people were down there besides the two? You, uh, I mean, yeah. How Previous many people year was 175. This year, I think was 45 or 49,000. So are they pushing that number though? Because I saw pictures and it was just it was empty. dead. It was uh, the central hall felt like it was a morgue. Did it? I mean, yeah. it was just bad. And then LG, their their booth was this huge booth. It was all particle board. Yeah. There was no, there was like two people staffing it and it was all QR codes for AR VR. So yeah. you would go there and do a QR code and then you would see what they had in the past. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, that's all. all right. We're going to be having our best of the best shows in the next two weeks. So all right. I'm getting everything lined up for that because there's a lot of great things that were there, but okay, let's talk about this. Your task was for us to look and to find a way to purchase a vehicle online. Right. So, so what did you find? First off, what did you find in your research about purchasing vehicles online? Well, one, it's going everywhere. Uh, two, um, I think it's, uh, well, so I'll give you a couple of stats. In 2019, globally, 100, 825,000 cars were purchased online. They believe by 2025, it'll be 6 million vehicles purchased online globally. Nice. So that is pretty amazing change. Two, my opinion, just reading all that, every, everybody, there are a lot of people coming out like Carvana and other ones doing the used car sales and deliver it to your, to your mm -hmm. house, right? You have a seven-day window to return it if you don't like it. Hence, you know, so you can just return it. They'll come and get it. Uh, you can also do trade-ins at the same time. They'll come, they'll inspect your vehicle, give you your vehicle, write the, do the transaction for what they think the car's worth, and they, and they take your vehicle and leave your new one. Um, what is interesting, though, is Ford believes that this is going to drive new car sales. They're going to have less amount of inventory and drive just in time with customization. So while online sales are are commoditizing the used car market, what Ford is saying is that the online sales is going to personalize and drive additional value to the to the end user, to the customer uh, through customization and um, really picking what you want and all that and just really using the dealership as the final delivery mechanism. Okay, so you're so, telling me if I got a Ford, because I like Ford Focus. Yes, yeah, so you do like Fords. I do, because you know what? They just seem to work. And when they break down, I know like the eight air codes, the Ford Focus is sure, yeah. So it makes it very simple, because I've uh -huh. got like five of them in my family. So we do have a little bit. Um, I could then order like my radio, my speaker setup, maybe my wheels, essentially kind of customize this selection. That's what Ford, Ford thinks is going. They're only doing one right now. They're trying it out with their Mustang, their e-Mustang. Okay. Um, but they want to, that's what they're expanding it to is that it's, and really dealerships in the future, there's 10, all basically all the major brands that all the 10, 10 major car manufacturers are all now online sales working with their dealerships, but they envision really dealerships changing to more of a, a test drive or um, checking out the vehicle, but not necessarily even picking the vehicle up there. It'll be delivered to your house. So no, really changing the brick and mortar section all the way around. So does this look this kind of the death nail of the common car shopping experience? Well, right now you can do everything online. I mean, the, the way they have the VR and AR to, at some of these uh, sites to see the car, you can do everything except drive it. And, and I'm surprised what the research is showing is that a lot of people are okay without driving the vehicle anymore to buy it, which I was yep. surprised at. Yep. That, that, you know, I, I, well, I could see if I was purchasing. Sale. Yeah, car sales has been a, a staple of 
our culture because they've tried this in the past and it yep. didn't work yep. at all direct to direct to customer mm -hmm. stuff but the more we advance in technology and the more we start depending on it the less we want to deal with the bad marriage that nobody wants to be in. Now you actually used to work at a car. I did. I sold cars once. And sold, and it, and it was a horrible, horrible job. It was a horrible job. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see that. You know what? It's, it's always that high pressure salesperson that, that I go on in there and I want to buy this car. And they, they are, they're trying to steer me towards there, this there other car. There are so many psychological warfare techniques going on in a, in a car sales uh, transaction dynamic. It's, yep. it's crazy. So well, here's here's one of the interesting things on that is that they're saying that you can get a higher price on a used car buying on uh, online. They'll, okay. the, the user will pay an extra eight hundred fifty dollars to buy a vehicle online instead of going to a used car place. Yeah, I, I, I believe can see that. that absolutely because you know everybody's what? tired. Everybody's tired of dealing with the so eight hundred bucks is see so what you're telling me is eight, I would spend eight hundred bucks or the users would spend eight hundred bucks to not have that guy and then it takes for ever to get the paperwork i don't know if that's like a whole ploy or anything but the last car i bought it was like a six hour process i'm like i just want to buy that vehicle well let us go back to the manager yeah, yeah let's go that, back that's to the all, that's... I, went, I went and tested it real quick i literally i was like i have to stop clicking because within 30 seconds i could have bought a car i mean it was like boom 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 on drive car or something like dot com and it was if you have pre if you're pre-certified for financing it is yeah. literally super fast i mean it's unbelievably fast yeah, it wants to take advantage of your, of your quick thinking and and, and quick doing skills. Yeah, I kind of like that's no, what but Amazon that, does. That, that whole that clicks. whole thing is set up so that you become aggravated, so that you're likely to be a pushover for all the other. Is that why they take forever? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, all it's, right. a, it's all it's all it's it's a it's a thing. All right, so so let me ask you, Phil, what was the best service or website that you found if you're going to buy a car yourself? As you said, it was it was very quick mm -hmm. and easy. You're gonna Arvana. buy it. Arvana of Room. Arvana of Room, either of one of those. They have the they really have a nice uh interface, UI interface, and then the the to see the actual vehicle to know what you're buying was really, really good how they laid it out. You can spin it around the website, open up the doors, open up the hood, really zoom in on all the different features and understand what you're buying. And it's the actual vehicle you're buying because it's used vehicles. So they actually take it into a at the studio, take pictures of the entire vehicle and then put it on the website. Oh, wow. Does it have a 3D? So, so it's a used vehicle. They come in. I'm sure they detail it, right? Because that's what you, yeah. you all the detail. You clean it all up. And then is it like a 3D camera or is it just yeah. like still shots? Or how do you actually I, zoom I, in? I, I, it's some type of 3D system they're doing because it's it's outside the vehicle. And then you can open the door and kind of zoom in and sit in the vehicle and then look around, you know, inside the vehicle as well. All right, so what was something in your research that made you think, so Carvana in Vroom, is that what you said, VR? Yes, V-R-O-O-M, Vroom. Or, M, or, your, or your two top picks, so there you go. We're, we're not getting paid by any of these people. None of them are sponsors. Phil didn't do any uh, sponsorship uh, on the side type of deal. These are all no. just independent research. Um, what What is something that would make you think that this could be the way of the future? The... The amount of cars that are being sold and just the COVID has really changed the way people are buying. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, the way Ford and all the other dealerships are investing money into this. It's uh, And Tesla has changed the game too. Tesla uh, online sales, it drives online sales in North America right now. And uh, I think it's like 66% of all online sales in North America are Tesla right now. So it's really, you know, Musk again, driving the innovation uh, for this going forward. You see, he's putting a, a tube in the back of your brain. That's right. So you we're gonna do a so I can just go and buy. A, I'm gonna be buying. Buying. Oh, well, you're gonna jack. You're gonna jack yourself into your car. In a few That's days. right. Yeah. You can just plug it and drive around. I'm gonna. I, I think it would be funny if you could just walk up to somebody and be like, "Hey, Alexa, buy that TV," and their brain just goes off. Right, and buys it. <laughs> They're ready to go. All right, it goes to the actual person that has the neural link that is actually working on the back hey, end is, of that. This is a little scary, <laughs> okay, actually. All right. <laughs> all right. So now with your research, would Phil go and purchase a vehicle in person or during this research, has it changed your way of buying a vehicle where you may choose to go online? Surprisingly, yes. A lot of times you ask these questions, I'll tell you no. But on this yeah. one, uh, th this one, yes, it's it's it was very, very easy. My, my wife and I just bought a used car about a year and a half ago. And literally, Mike was talking about it was like four hours at the dealership or six no. hours at the dealership. It was insane. We were just ever. 
and, and you know, I could, but we can buy one like you can buy one within two minutes if you're pre-qualified on the on the. And so why not? If you know the vehicle and you like it, she knew exactly what she wanted. I would do it online now. Now, do they have a warranty? Like, so let's say you, you buy it and you don't really like it. Do they give you like a three day, five day, seven day, seven, seven day, seven day return policy? Most of them do. Um, they'll come pick it up again. Uh, yes. And, um, they have their own limit. All of them have their own limited warranties depending on the, on the manufacturer for a used car as well. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to buy a- I I'd do that. I'd buy a car. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I know what it's like behind. Yeah, the I don't think I'm ever going to go and buy another one again. I, I, I can buy it online now and the systems are in place to do that. I, that would save me so much time. I just do it on a Thursday, come and Drop that machine off uh, Friday, Saturday for me to test drive I, for a couple of yeah, days I, and boom. I would have to be careful though, like Phil said. It'd be like, well, that, that's really, it's really easy to just put, push that buy button. There you go. And you're just committed yourself to that. You All say, right. You better be, better be pretty responsible. <laughs> Otherwise, you <do. laughs> Well, Phil, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us on Thanks, our, our new time. We will have you back for sure. I'm sure we'll talk uh, offline about another project we can have you work on. But that was Phil Hennessy, and he is our technology expert, and he's talked all about the car purchasing process. Now, if you want to rewatch this segment, all you got to do is go to techtimeradio.com. You can click on guests. You can see Phil's picture, and then you can actually clip that segment out, send it to your guests, and send it to your friends or your tech timers, and then they can rewatch the episode again. All right, well, we're going to take a break. When we turn, Bye, we, Bill. we have This Week in Technology. Uh, I'm Nathan Mum with Tech Time Radio with Mike Roday and, Jody- and Odie. Please join us after this break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration. The electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine? especially those Rockstar and Gatorade substitutes. Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronique Hydration, sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, electrolyte, powdered packets for daily use, containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste. Their product contains elderberry. Elderberry. Which has immune-boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season. Hydronic Hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling. Your busy days in 2022 can change. Do you want a sugar-free, keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts? If so, give Hydronic Hydration a try. You can visit the website at www.hydroniquehydration. It's www.hydroniquehydration.com hydration.com that's the word hydration and unique mashed together or you can search for hydronique hydration on amazon.com or on their own website at hydronique hydration.com and now let's look back at this week in technology all right this this week in technology all right mike here's what we got january 22nd 1984 and we're going to also include January 24th, 1984. So two days apart. Yep. January 22nd, 1984. Apple Computer Broadcasts, the now famous 1984 commercial, introducing this new computer called the Macintosh. The Mac- During the third quarter of Super Bowl 18, uh, it was the first time a ad that truly came to broadcast about computers was ever advertised. However, in its little known piece of trivia, this ad was aired on other times at 1 a.m. on December 15th, 1983 in Twin Falls, Idaho, but only so that the advertisement could be submitted to award ceremonies for that year. A 30-second version ran in theater starting January 17th, but it was the broadcast during the Super Bowl that people really took notice of it. I was 11 years old then, and I remember seeing the commercial, but I also remember being more interested in watching the Redskins, or the Raiders, beat the Redskins. Well, you almost met, you almost... I have almost, it right down right there. So. Yeah, you almost made a mistake. There, I, I had a little whiskey during that uh, yeah. break. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until years later that I actually recalled the commercial. Yet, as I recall it, it was not as memorable as I thought. 
You know that when I actually saw it, it was it was. I don't remember it at all. So it, so it wasn't you know. as as memorable. But now it is truly a moment that changed the world. You can Google it. You can, and they you can will, watch it on YouTube. They will find your location and <laughs> send it to you. That's right. Uh, the original Macintosh computer, though, then launched January twenty fourth, two days later, nineteen eighty four. Apple Computer launched the Macintosh computer in the demonstration computer room in front of 3,000 people. While the Apple Lisa was the first commercial computer with a graphical interface, the Macintosh would bring graphical computing and computing in general to the rest of us. As Apple's early slogan for the Macintosh claimed, it was not the commercial success, though, as Microsoft DOS and even Windows 311 and Windows later, but it's doubtful that if this would not have been such a great push, the entire computer industry ahead would not be as it is today well yeah 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 it's a big deal so it's okay because you know walk into an apple store yeah you're gonna be paying a lot of money <laughs> that's that's what you get from the macintosh that's all right. right we're gonna take a commercial break when we come on back here we're gonna have our winter olympic games and technology problems people are having with beijing china as we have our technology insider we'll see you after this break Hey, Mike. What's up? Hey, with 2022 coming along, guess what? We got some news to announce. What are we going to announce? Well, we are announcing that we are going to be continuing to broaden our show, and we are moving to Kixie 880. 880 AM KIXI? Starting January 11th. We are going to be on Tuesdays from 3 to 4 PM. But don't you fear, because everybody at KKNW will still continue to have our show broadcasting on Saturdays for the two hours. And of course, our replay options on Thursday morning. Awesome. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration, the electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine, especially those Rockstar and Gatorade substitutes? Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronique Hydration, sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant rich electrolyte powdered packets for daily use containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste their product contains elderberry elderberry which has immune boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season hydronique hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling your busy days in 2022 can change do you want a sugar-free keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts? If so, give Hydronique Hydration a try. You can visit the website at www.hydroniquehydration. It's www.hydroniquehydration.com. hydration.com. That's the word hydration and unique mashed together. Or you can search for Hydronique Hydration on amazon.com or on their own website at hydroniquehydration.com. All right, we're welcome. Back. welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We have our South Shot Bourbon, 80 proof, $9.19 a bottle. During the break, I had to get another shot of this. What do you think? Mm, this is I, great. I, I do like it. I love this. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. But... Okay, well, I'll just tell you the, the, on our notes that I have here from uh, Mr. <laughs> Gregoire. Up. He says, there's maybe hints of vanilla beans, there maybe some it. toffee, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but otherwise, the conclusion of this is ugh. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't he like it. Uh, he doesn't like this at all. Well, the I love it. I, know, I think the, it's the, fantastic. I, I do have a problem with it being not a true barrel aged bourbon. Okay, that's, you know, that's, okay, whiskey. That's snob. part of yeah. Okay, I'm a little bit of 
I could be a little bit of a whiskey snob, okay. even though I have no idea what I'm drinking. This is nine dollars, though. It doesn't it's, have a cork top, though. It's it's certainly not Canadian Mist. It's not Canadian Mist, which is uh, the worst. Was it that nine bucks? Uh, the, no, Canadian Mist was, that was like it was $2. like five bucks. It was like five bucks to get. The it whole was two dollars and ninety eight. Yeah, the only time when you go into wines and more and you're buying it and they look at you and say, "The you bums, sure you want this? The bums don't even buy this. Are you sure you want this? Oh no, I have this uh, radio show and we take whis whiskey. Sure, and the, you have a radio <laughs> show. And the guy's like, "Okay, that's gross stuff. That's right. All right. Well, welcome back. Now we have." Our lie to me expert, Microday, joining me, as I call you each and every time. Yeah. But now we're now getting ready to move into the winter games and technology problems people are having in Beijing, China. Let's start this next segment. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right. The Winter Olympics could be the highlight of China's innovative and yet troubling items for technology. Let's talk about how they're planning to affect and control the weather. The nation is expected to deploy technology at new levels of scale to ensure the Olympics come off looking clean. When Americans tune into NBC to watch the Beijing Olympics next week, they are going to see some of the bluest skies and the whitest slopes the Winter Games has ever shown. China, after all, will make sure of it. After the skier solemns and snowboarders snow cross, the Chinese government is likely to be working hard behind the scenes in the country to make the weather look like it wants. The country is expected to activate departments like the Beijing Weather Modification Office. They actually have an office called the Beijing Weather Modification Office, a yeah, division I'm sure. of China's Weather Modification Center. The government was going to step up with drones to try to create rain and storms and even turn the sky blue. The Truman Show has nothing on what the Beijing well, Organizing organize Committee is planning to do. We're Weren't you in China for the Summer Olympics? So I was in 2008. I was there at the Beijing Summer Olympics, and, and I was you were, there. You were there with Paul, right? I was. Uh, I was working at a company called Vulcan Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked directly for the owner of the company, and that individual was one was of the co-founders. Uh, the co-founders of Microsoft, which would be either Bill Gates or Paul Allen. Would it, would it be and Paul Allen? And it wasn't Bill Gates. So it'd be one of those people. I just don't want to say that I was working directly with him. Mm -hmm. And I was there at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Let me just tell you, the Beijing Olympics in 2008 that you saw on television, my wife would call me and say, oh, it looks so beautiful. They show the, the things here. It was a scam. It was absolutely but, one of the biggest yeah, scams. You were, you were telling some stories about that. So, what? so literally, they had a private road lane that was built for the Olympic Committee. So if you had an Olympic Committee badge, you were allowed, or if you're a participant, mm -hmm. if you were staying out in one of the Olympic villages, or if you were a VIP and had a pass, you had a private road that was essentially direct access to all the venues at the 2008 Olympics. Mm -hmm. As you would drive down the street, we were there literally like three months before the Olympics. And there's like no street. This is like in the middle of no man's land. There's nothing there. You're going out to the bird's nest, which is their big fancy opening right. area that they had there. There right. is nothing there. They're literally like building it three months before. Come the Olympics 2008, you drive down this road and there are multiplex buildings that are built. Mm -hmm. There are people out in these farms that were created. They literally built farms on the way and they would have people as you're driving to the venues stop their farming and wave at you they weren't really farmers they were hired people too they were hired to by the chinese government first off these buildings were fake when you actually walked up to these buildings you would have all this glass structure these 30-story buildings mm -hmm. and you look inside and it was nothing it was literally blair it was most of the time they didn't even have the roads uh, and the stuff going to the back of the building. So you'd have a road with a building that was built and no way to actually enter the building. Wow. And now they're going to control the weather. And now they're controlling the weather. All right. And then, uh, of course, we, we can't stop just controlling the weather itself. Uh, China is also making it entirely artificial. It's estimating that it's going to have 40 million gallon, uh, gallons uh, Galleons. I'm, I'm thinking. There, of, yeah, there's some. I, I'm thinking of some, some piracy going on. We got some on there. these things <laughs> coming up here. All right. So we had 49 million gallons of water that has essentially been turned into snow because the two nearby mountain areas that will be hosting ski and snowboarding events are essentially empty of snow. There is yeah. no snow there. You can actually literally look at the mountains for these events and look to the mountain next to it, and you have this brown, dirty mountain as you're having all this snow being manufactured for you. Now, this is not new. Ski, no. Ski areas do this all they the do time. do this all the time. So it's not that this is something that's unique to China, but 
they do not really have an abundance of water in the first place. And a lot of their uh, areas and towns don't even have running water, but yet they're f- deciding to pipe it all in here so they can build. Well, stuff. yeah, it's got to look good. All right. The other thing is athletes all over the uh, different nations have been advised to use burner phones while in Beijing, China. Now, why is that? Now, it's not because they're going to be doing crazy Because Google's stuff. tracking them. Well, it's not because <laughs> Google's tracking them. But that, that may be happening, too. But essentially, this is because these burner phones are needed because the app that is used, my 2022 app that is used by the athletes, audience members, and media uh, to also, of course, monitor COVID is what they're saying, mm-hmm. essentially has no security. And essentially, they have had security companies come on out like Citizen Lane uh, Lab reports that essentially said that they have censorship words in this app that they're tracking there is no encryption on the app that you put in this information so when you fill in so your basically information, when i when i fill in this app and i use this app to like text somebody that was like hey, let's look go at meet that, up look at, at that the, sucky mountain over there that has no snow on it they're they're gonna like, track who you gonna, are who said that they're gonna and and make sure to either remove that or make sure that that doesn't get published anywhere else so they're gonna essentially censor all the information except of course all the medical information that they want you to put in this app so that you can attend the olympics interesting so they want your medical information they want your medical information but they don't want you uh, talking about it all right well let me that hipaa doesn't work in china it's really interesting that uh, china has also hired five thousand employees during this time to maintain app functionality during the winter games in comparison the winter olympics in 2010 held in vancouver bc hired 10 people to monitor this app so either that app is in much worse shape for china or they are hiring a whole bunch of additional four thousand well they need people to be able to identify additional what's resources. going on and track everything That's right right all right well we're going to take a commercial break when we come on back we got a uh, mike's mesmerizing moment and maybe a little nathan nugget we'll see you after this hey babe i hear that you can download a new voice on siri no way yes it's true it's a voice that goes hey you big honk what do you want to do and where do you want to go it. oh god <laughs> okay i'm kidding what has tech ever done for our relationships mm, we can't talk about that on the radio if you want to eavesdrop on juicy conversations that no one is having around all things love sex and relationships join us right here 1 p.m on kknw and wherever you get your podcast we look forward to seeing you in the love shack how to see a man about a dog it combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, Collected Writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. This is your Nugget of the Week. All right, Mr. Gorday, TV sales, okay. LG 65-inch. C1 OLD TV has dropped to a record low just ahead of the Super Bowl prices. The Nathan Nugget, as we talked about, this is the time to buy TVs, not during the holidays. But right. now, essentially, the 65-inch C1 OLED TV is on sale for $1,700, originally $2,500 just a week ago. That's a massive $700 discount and the lowest price we've seen for OLED displays. As we're talking about it, now is the time to buy a television with Tech Time Radio. This is the information that you get from the inside. The best sales will happen leading up to the Super Bowl. So you have a week and a half to get the best deals taken care of. All right, talking about 5G. Unfortunately, in our hometown carrier, canceled flights this week. Yes, they did. 5G in weather. The 5G scenario that we talked about in about four months ago, you can go back and take a look at 5G in uh, airports on techtimeradio.com, talks about the problems that is frustrating air traffic control towers that are not allowing people to leave the areas because the 5G is interfering with the transmission of airplanes. Right. Still happening today. All right. We're now going to move on to our Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to us by Story Coffee. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. So what was that question you were asking me about China? Uh, which one? The, the, do you, the ch- China is fake? or the, do they, why, did they, why are they going yeah, why, through all this effort? Yeah, why are they right? going through all? Yeah, we talked about that too. Why are they going through all this effort to make them look great and to, and to do all this? What is with the fake part of doing it's, this? It's the same thing as you getting ready for a date. And what? Okay, they're that. trying to they're trying to present a f- unified image that China is blissful and awesome, and and it's exactly what we do. You know, human behavior translates to group behavior, to nation national behavior, to 
global behavior. Okay, right. So China is trying to show the world that they have it all together, and it's exactly what we do when we get ready for a date. Right? We don't get ready for a date and like not shower and shave and do all this stuff. We 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 dress up, and that's what that's what China's doing in a nutshell. All right. Okay. Uh, China is just an interesting place. It's all about perception, perception management. Well, perception perception management is a big thing with everybody. Corporations do it. We do it. uh, Governments do it. Everybody does it. All right. Let's talk about our whiskey, our South Shot Bourbon, 80 proof, $9.19 a bottle. Are you going to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, Mike? You know, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Okay. It's, it's 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 not a bad tasting whiskey. All right, I'm going to give it a thumbs up also. I thought it was really okay. good. Sorry, Greg. For, for Sorry, Mark. Mark Mark Gregoire is going to have to uh, deal with that as our decisions are being made. There. All right, well, I think now it's time for us to essentially wrap up the show. I'm Nathan Mum. Remember, the science of tomorrow starts with technology of the day. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.